Hello there, and welcome to Revelations from the Courtroom of Heaven. Aaron here with you. This week, the topic, your testimony. And everyone who comes to Christ, don't we have a testimony? Don't people expect to hear something? The, the Bible tells us to not, you know, have a loss of words for our testimony. We should always have something to say. We should always have an account to say. And really, if you've lived life and you've known darkness, you've known sin, you've known degradation, you know what it's like to, to feel hopeless. And when Jesus calls you to himself and your eyes are open to, wow, you are the answer. You're the reason I'm living. You sent me here. You made me. God made all things through you. Wow. It, it is and has always been Jesus and that there's your testimony. And the great use of your testimony, you know, it's, it's for you to encourage yourself. It's for you to gain strength from. And as we're going to see, it's also for you to destroy the enemy with and to encourage others with. YouTube has so many wonderful Christian testimonies. I mean, you can, you can know that many people are being saved through, you know, people's testimony. So your testimony is of great importance. And maybe you don't value your testimony as something real powerful. If it brought you to Jesus, it's plenty powerful. And, you know, how many people that are just, we'll say, run of the mill, you know, we'll, we'll just use that word, you know, they live life, they've loved, they've lost, they've kind of just existed. Maybe there's no real great thing to their life, so they think. But, you know, they're still waiting to hear a testimony. So if your testimony is just, you know, it's just all of a sudden you got saved one day, you know, put value in this thing. Because it is a, it's a miracle to be saved. It's a miracle, you know, to have been an atheist or an unbeliever or a lukewarm Christian, right? And then to come to the realization of, wait, 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 I need to get my life together. My life has such more meaning now that I put Jesus in, in it and I understand that I came from him and I have a, this destiny to fulfill. There's so much meaning in your life now that you have a true, on fire, powerful testimony. And if you do think that, you know, you don't have that great of a testimony, I've heard a lot of people like I, I would read a lot of comments with uh, like, for instance, like a Todd White video and people are just like, man, look at this guy because he, he has a radical testimony. He was real messed up, almost on the verge of killing himself. Um, and upon doing that, I think it was something like he went to his father-in-law's house and like got a gun or whatever. But he had like a last minute thing of, all right, I'm, I'm going to thumb this phone book or, or something. But anyway, he landed on the on a uh like a preacher's um, address or something. And it turned out to be Dan Moeller, I think is his name. And any, anyway, so on the verge of blowing his brains out and being full of sin and full of selfishness, a, a miracle happens to where Todd White opened himself up to the possibility of Jesus and that he needs help, okay? So, and that led him to come to Christ. So anyway, people see that and they're like, oh, I have nothing like that to give. I have no use for the kingdom. Don't sell yourself short. And if you, if, you, if you really cry out for it, maybe God will put you through all kinds of trials and struggles to give you a testimony. But trials and struggles do give us a testimony. And do you know, like, um, you know, with our own five senses and our own way of living life, right? We don't want to suffer. We don't want bad things to happen to us. Like, that's kind of our soul, right? It likes comfort. Do you know that your spirit man... <laughs> It loves to prove itself to God. It loves to go through trials and testings to prove itself to God, to prove our love to God. And that's how our spirits work. You know, our, our spirits with the Holy Spirit in us, it cries out, Abba, Father. It cries out everything. Send me, God, whatever you need me to do. Yes, yes, yes. See, God sees and your spirit understands that a lot of people are messed up and they need someone to relate to, to bring them out of that stuff. And, and that, that's a complex thing. You know, experiential knowledge, there is nothing better than that. So when you can tell someone, dude, I was right where you were at. I was beyond hopeless. I was in all these, you know, I was an atheist or I was a practicing Buddhist or whatever. And then God revealed himself to me through Jesus Christ. And I, I saw things are different now. I mean, you, you need to understand what I'm saying because I was right there. 
that is invaluable. So with that, there's that brother to brother, sister to sister, brother to sister component of that testimony. But there's also the legal rights that when you overcome something through Christ and he's the one that delivers you from it and you hang on with him in your deliverance, you have legal rights over the enemy. So someone who was caught up in, we'll say perversion or whatever, if they allow Jesus to walk them through that maze of overcoming that thing, or if he all of a sudden sets them free of that thing, they have everything that Jesus put in them to save them. They, we contain that, right? So all of that resurrection power, all of that anointing to break every yoke that comes from you being in something and being rescued from it, you're then able to do that for other people. And this is how God works. See, resurrection power is the glory of God. It is the power to make old things new, to redeem any anything. And when you overcome a sin, it is the resurrection power in you alive in your soul, in your mind, in your heart, wherever, redeeming you and filling you with power. And every demon that has the power of sin, the power of darkness over a person that has them captive, that, that that's, they're in the power of the enemy. When you overcome that thing, you have the resurrection power to destroy that. You can lay hold to and seize that thing and command it to be gone and command and just through you being there, just through that anointing, you can see that power in you being transferred to that person, a redeemed soul. Amazing. So the that's kind of the, the nitty and gritty of, of, of how stuff kind of works in the spirit realm and what a testimony really does. Is there a biblical basis for this? Hmm, let's see. Revelation 12, we're going to go into verse 10. For the accuser of our brothers, this is the devil, has been thrown down. He who accuses them day and night before our God. They, the people of God, have conquered him, the accuser, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So they did not seize their old life back, right? They did not seize their way of doing things. They yielded to God and let him do the work. So what is all right there is exactly what I was just talking about. And that's the power of the testimony. And that's the receiving the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Receiving him as your savior is agreeing with the blood of the lamb. Agreeing with God, I understand that you had to go through all that to fix my life, to save me. And everything that you went through, God, I, I claim it, I receive it. And God, that shed blood of Jesus that is innocent, that washes me from all of this unrighteousness, all of this darkness. I need that in my life, God. And so there's, there's that. Do you see that? So the overcomers conquered the accuser by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They were cleansed and then, and then they understood what Jesus did for them. Having a testimony is understand what, understanding what God did for you. And if you think that you don't have a great testimony, do you believe that Jesus went to a cross just for you to redeem you? He took all that burden. He took all, the, all that pain, everything he went through, being beat and then having to walk up a hill with a cross and then being thrown in the, in the ground while on the cross and all that pain and all that suffering and not to mention that, but the Bible talks about all of the sins being poured upon him to the point that God had to look away from Jesus because he could not behold sin. And the Bible says that Jesus became sin for us, okay? So if you believe all that, you have a mighty testimony. You are believing the greatest miracle, the greatest act of love that ever happened. And, and you believe that, do you know that some people can't believe that? And, you know, pray for them. Don't, don't give up on them. But that's too far-fetched. And the Word of God even says that, you know, he uses the foolish thing. So, anyway, so you have a powerful testimony if Jesus is your Savior. How about that? How about that? Use it. And so maybe you're not viewing your testimony as something of use, right? But it is of use. It can be put into action, you can command darkness to flee. If you're in the light and we can put aside, you know, the fact that, you know, people that have been through darkness and that, you know, gone through a, a 
a process to get themselves own selves free from a sin or whatever, that they were paying a price, and that's a great price. And you can't take that away from that person, and that, that's a great, powerful thing. They're full of resurrection power. But you as a believer are light. So there's a point to understand what you came from. That's part of your testimony, right? You've been through all these things, and you came out from it. Well, your testimony carries so much power. But there's also just the aspect of, I was dead, now I'm alive in Christ. I was darkness, now I'm light in Christ. And God, let me use this light. Let me go where you want me to go and use this light. You know, so, so there's a time when to just know that you have a testimony and just let it work. Let God work your testimony. You, you know, don't keep it to yourself. So, and don't limit God. God can do whatever he wants, all right? And maybe other people paid a price or or whatever, but you can still benefit from that price because you're part of the body. You, you're you able to fellowship with others and to have anointings that co-mingle and coalesce together and do a mighty works. You're a part of the body, okay? So get out of any mindset that's going to limit God from moving. Get out of any mindset that is maybe jealous of someone else's testimony. And a point to be made too is you... We don't realize what people go through to, to pay a price for God. So when you see God, you know, using someone powerfully, don't let it intimidate you that you can never get there. And also don't be jealous. And who knows that the heart is deceitful above all things? Who knows that if you're a human and you have a heart and you're in a world and the lusts of it and the selfish nature of the flesh and all that stuff, it's a part of us that... It's natural to feel jealousy. Now, we want to nip it in the bud. We want to remove it. We want to grow beyond it. But your flesh will naturally be jealous, okay? So, and that's when you put your flesh under subjection, you know, to the Holy Spirit in you through the desires of your spirit, even with the Holy Spirit, and you get that thing ironed out. Realize that you could fall into these traps and don't be so blind that you can't be delivered from it because you can't be delivered for something that you, from something that you are in agreement with. So any little stupid thing. All right, so, so here. So there's a wonderful aspect of your testimony. I used to believe all these stupid things. I had greediness in me. I had jealousy in me, all these little things. And God showed me my heart's not right. Are you seeing the useful nature of who you are in Christ and how God wants to use all this stuff? All these little things, God, God wants to use it all. And really, those are big things because a little bit of leaven right? Leavens the whole loaf and can mess you up. It could mess your body up. You know, when we come together in a body, all of our stuff is out in the open, in the spirit realm. The enemy is able to see who's right with God and who's not. And what are the open doors that I can access? The enemy would say, see, he's an accuser. So that means he has all the notes. He has all the details. He has all the understandings of where his accusations can go. Okay. And the enemy's accusations, they can become rooted in reality. He can really grow to have something over you and something on you. And he can build a case against you. And he can take you out when you are not yielded to God, understanding that there's a protocol to follow, understanding that you need to be righteous, understanding that you're going to be held accountable for the things that are in you that you're not letting go of, right? Right. So what a great testimony of being real, and that's what we need. We need real Christians. That's what we need. What a great testimony of, of being like, I had all this ought in me towards my brother. I was jealous of that guy. I was greediness of here and, and, and stuff like that. But getting that rectified, powerful testimony, selfless, and God looks at you um, in a great way. And a lie also is that, uh, you know, you know, it, it'll keep you from wanting to feel dirty before God so that you're not going to confess, confess your sins. You may have a jealousy against someone, but you don't want to admit it to yourself, pride. Or a twisted form of pride would be you don't want to admit it to God because you don't want him to judge you or whatever. See that? See it? Do you, do you see the complexity of the human condition, right? So anyway, so all these things, all, when, when we give give the human condition, which we could call part of the flesh, the result of being separated from God, the result of living in a lost and fallen world, right? When we can reconcile all these things to God, we are building our testimony. We are building our testimony. And our testimony gives us power to operate in. Our testimony gives us authority over the enemy. 
And so the basic part of your testimony, right, is also through, through all of this, through all that we were talking about, right, you still, at the end of the day, that testimony points one direction, not here, points one direction to God, th- to the Christ in you, to the Holy Spirit that helps you overcome all these things, right? It is your weapon, something that you use to defeat the enemy and, to, and proclaim the goodness of God. Let's look at Isaiah 63, verse 7. I will make known the Lord's loving devotion and his praiseworthy acts because of all that the Lord has done for us, the many good things for the house of Israel according to his great compassion and loving devotion. How long-suffering has God been with you? How much has God seen you through? How many times have you slipped and fallen through your own doing? You know, and, and you got back up and you started you just continued on. Well, God was there, even if you don't hear it, if you, even if you don't feel it, to pick you up and to encourage you to keep going. That is a part of the loving devotion and faithfulness of God, okay? So your testimony is your story, okay? Your testimony goes right along with your destiny, don't we know, you know, we've talked about the book of destiny and the book of life and, and stuff like that. And so, but you're, you're going to be judged according to your, the book of destiny, right? The, the Bible says that those that do the will of God go to heaven. That, that, that's what the Bible says. So doing the will of God includes yielding to him and going about life, going about the plans of life, you know, through God's plans, putting down your plans and assuming God's direction for your life, right? But any great testimony, and then there's so many testimonies out there. There's so many testimonies that were just waiting to be birthed. There's so many people that are in the depths of sin and despair, the down and outers, as God calls them, that God is going to, in a moment, bring into the house of God. And we are going to need to receive them, right? Right? So all that we're, we're going through is for them, right? And all that uh, they're going to be able to do through their testimony is for other people. See, it's a, the body edifies itself. The body of Christ, the word of God says, edifies, takes care of itself, okay? So we're going to continue on with, the te- with uh, talking about testimony, but I want you to realize that the reality of life the circumstances of life, everything that you go through, there's a redemption waiting for it. There's a, there's a purpose in it. And the redeeming aspect of God is everything you've gone through, you know, God has kept record of it. He sees all, knows all, and he wants to pay you back for all of your, you know, all of the times that you refuse to lay down, all the times that you allowed him to get you back up and to move forward into his kingdom, right? There's a redemption for all that you've endured through the hands of the enemy, and there's mercy and compassion and grace that is going to even use everything that you did as long as you turn it towards God. I messed up here, 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 and here. The enemy had me here, 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 and here. But guess what? But God, but God. If your testimony includes but God, God, that's a righteous testimony, and you are right with God in all those areas, okay? So we realize our own shortcomings. That's a blessing. That's a great thing to realize that. And, and uh, if, if you don't realize that, God will help you realize that. And it's really his mercy getting you out of pride so that he has a vessel that he can work with and that, so that he has a testimony he can use, okay? Because at the end of our day, our testimonies are for God to use for his kingdom. All right. Absorb. Ask yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit. Give with him. Say, God, let's iron this thing out. Show me the depth of my testimony. What's really going on here? And we're going to resume next week. Um, Thanks for joining me. Until next time.